Hey, it's Brent from the Crypto Basic Podcast. Thanks for finding your way to our YouTube channel. What follows here is a clip from our Friday flagship episode. And what that is, is it's an episode that covers the news and goings on of the week. And we've kind of broken that down into individual segments now when we throw it up on YouTube. So if you like what you see, you can listen to the full episode wherever you get your podcasts. And the link is in the description below. And if you like the video format, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and like the video. We would appreciate it. <laughs> All right, Mike. So here's the thing. As you know, and as we experienced on the first half of the show, if I let Brent talk now, then it's going to be depressing and sad. And we're going to hear about terrible things in the world. So why don't you hit us with something positive to offset how much, uh, you know, scamminess there was before. Absolutely. And this was something that uh, Anthony dropped by in our Discord. Anthony from Ethereum Classic, Anthony Lusardi, one of our one of our good friends of the podcast. And this was something that I was very excited to share with you guys as well when I discovered it. But basically, and I, the title was, I misread the title a little bit. Uh, originally, I thought the Ethereum Special Projects donated Ethereum to the Ethereum Classic uh, cooperative. However, it was actually, we're going to find out, Ethereum it was actually Classic. Ethereum Classic that yeah. they donated to them. And I, I think the story gets a little more interesting <laughs> than we originally expected. So um, for those of you that need a little catch up here, uh, Ethereum Classic hard forked from Ethereum about two years ago. There was a... Other way. Ethereum hard forked from Ethereum Classic. <laughs> there was a fork, a contentious fork. Contentious. There was a fork, but it was... All right, all right. I original. was not there. <laughs> there are now there was originally a single Ethereum. There are now two Ethereums. I don't know who's the big brother. I don't know who's the little brother. I like them both equally. I'm just gonna leave it at that. One of them is called Classic. <laughs> <laughs> um. So in the original Ethereum hack that um the a hacker attacked the DAO that kept some of the money, there was originally stolen four point two percent of all the ethereum that was in play and you know they wanted to roll the the blockchain back and prevent that and the ethereum classic thought that immutability is the most important part of the blockchain and we can't roll back something just because it was inconvenient for us so that's where these two communities uh kind of differed and for the most part for the past two years they largely ignored each other there was you know <laughs> some mentions of uh little spats back and forth on twitter but for the most part it's been you know we respect you guys and you know we're going to do our thing so uh the ethereum foundation invited anthony lusardi to speak at edcon uh about how they would like ethereum classic and ethereum to work together more cohesively in return the guy that uh, that is writing this art article was uh virgil griffith he's from ethereum and he was then invited to the uh ethereum cooperation um actually hold on i'm mixing, mixing ethereum that classic name up. cooperative no, there was a, there was another name for the conference, Ethereum uh, Classic Summit. That's what it was. So oh. Virgil was invited to the Ethereum Classic Summit to speak on a similar topic about how the two can work together more often and better. So what has come from this little agreement? Well, things such as the Ethereum Ethereum Classic Peace Bridge, which is basically being able to broadcast both blockchains on the other blockchain so that there is a bridge that's being built between the two of them. They're also the Ethereum Classic Foundation and Ethereum Cooperative are jointly funding Acroma Labs, and that's what is building that peace bridge. So there's definitely been some uh, you know, mutually beneficial things going on. So why did they find 15,000 extra Ethereum Classic to give to the Ethereum Classic community? They were doing a financial sweep of the old foundation wallets. And they just found it. And who knows how much Ethereum Classic they had, but they just found a bunch of it. And they just decided that, you know what, let's let's give it to them. We appreciate their hard work. We want to work together. We want to we, they understood that so many of the developers that are working on Ethereum Classic might want to work on Ethereum as well. There doesn't need to be contention in this space. That's what I got out of it. And the, <laughs> there was one quote at the end of the article that really summed it up properly. And this was this was uh, Virgil Virgil speaking here, and he says, "Deep down, we'll always love you. The divorce was bitter, and the narcissism of small differences will continue to raise its head within our two communities. But deep down, the Ethereum Classic community will always be a part of us by both history and vision. Live long and prosper. Honestly, this is such a definitive 
turn from what we're seeing in something like Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, that this is a really important step for this community. These are two very large, very powerful Ethereum com- or crypto communities. And I think working together is a really, really big deal. And we need to look into the language that they use here, Mike. They said live long and prosper. Was that emoji from them or from you? From them. Okay. So, and they used the Vulcan uh, so, salute emoji. So they are really symbolizing the Vulcans and Romulans were originally two separate uh, – or there's two, two separate species now. But this they were Star originally – glory just for those of you that are – The same lost. species. So – they are back to reunification, and I think that's what they're getting at. They're they're really preaching reunification here with the Vulcans and Romans, although they, you know, you know, they, they hated each other for a little while. I have no idea what Brett just said. Cream, did you have anything to add? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was talking about Star Trek, and that's the reference point here. But um the one thing I do want to add, because I actually thought it was one of the more interesting things that they noted as well, is there's a part of the article where he says, here's how we're justifying to the Ethereum community that this is what makes sense, right? Because what you have to be mindful of, what we all have to be mindful of is Ethereum special projects, if they do this sweep, now they have all these funds that could be used to stimulate the Ethereum network. So they're donating it, quote unquote, to the Ethereum Classic Foundation and and, and they're, as far as we were told by Anthony, no strings attached whatsoever. You guys could do whatever you want with it. And I think it's important to note, it's not just that they want to bury the hatchet and they want to come to terms, but they specifically said, here's how we want to show to Ethereum, our Ethereum community, that it makes sense for us as a network to invest in Ethereum Classic. And then they started listing off like the quality of engineering from the Sputnik virtual machine that was developed by Ethereum Classic, the Emerald platform, and all of these things that Ethereum Classic is developing developing is compatible with ethereum so it's it's not just burying the hatchet it's also ethereum saying that they see themselves as part of the same ecosystem and personally benefiting as a network from ethereum classics continued development and growth yeah you know what that reminds me of the very harmonious relationship between bitcoin and bitcoin cash i'm glad they're finally getting on board not like well, this is this is what this is what needs to happen in in these in these scenarios where we've we've developed contention we develop these different projects. There's no reason that Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash have to sit there and continue to argue over oh, I'm the real Bitcoin oh, I'm the real Bitcoin. Like they they had their argument, it was over. They're separate projects. Move on and really see how everybody can benefit from this and stop with the bullshit let's be honest like how much could bitcoin cash and bitcoin communities benefit from mutually beneficial technology i would imagine there's got to be a ton of overlap there as well right yeah it's got to be great now it's never going to happen yeah that they're the the you know they mentioned narcissism in that little uh thing there which i i'm sure there anybody who is who's that big on anything is going to have some but it is real deep with the Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, I mean, they are, they're, uh, they are never, yeah, that they're not coming together. And if they did, I think it would be great for both communities, and it would help everything involved if they just stopped and just Bitcoin Cash is a different option to Bitcoin that functions differently and that has a different goal in mind. So I'm gonna say two things for this for what it's worth. One is, um, I think it's difficult to compare. Number one is we shouldn't be uh, listening to just the loudest voices in the room, right? So it would be interesting to know how much of a divide there really is between, quote unquote, the Bitcoin Cash community and the Bitcoin community and how much is just voices like Roger Ver, right? And the second thing is... Wait, if you just go into their subreddits, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, well, yeah but Brent, you, you've mentioned yourself that these are very heavily curated subreddits from the top down. So it means that four or five influential moderators in either one of those subreddits can determine how the content looks to everybody. So if it's heavy censorship and heavy moderation, again, just a few people could be controlling that. And then I go back to the, like, if you believe people are people and it's their environments and their incentives and disincentives that create a lot of the dynamics. Ultimately, the relationship between Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, I think, is a little bit different and could have more potential for cooperation than 
a currency like Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash where it's like it's not as much how many apps like if more people built apps on Ethereum Classic that can be used on Ethereum and vice versa and more devices, the network grows. They really kind of mutually benefit in a way that I don't necessarily see. You're right, Mike. There's probably a lot of technology that does overlap, but I don't know. The pure currency seems more like what pure currencies cooperate does Monero cooperate with Zcash? Does um, Dash cooperate with Pivot? Does the British pound and the US dollar, do they act? I don't know the answer to that. I'm asking legitimately. No, I, I don't know, but th that's what I mean when I say that it's difficult to compare something that is meant to be a currency. Or well, a I'm like thinking Bitcoin. more about like sidechain solutions. I'm thinking more about just the, the way the technology like could interact with the two. Yeah, I, but, I don't honestly. But again, that's it's antithetical to Bitcoin Cash's solution. Why would Bitcoin Cash want to cooperate in payment layer solutions when they specifically their whole reason for being was that they think that the solution is to widen the, the block size? Right. I was more referring to let's obviously there are points of contention, you know, the yeah, block yeah. size limits. There are, there are different things, but I, I'm also certain there's many other features of the code that has nothing to do with that part of it. That certainly could benefit both sides. I would think. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. There's definitely ways in which the communities could help each other. And I think that it, in certain settings they would. And I think most people don't feel the way that it comes through online because of the loud voices that we were talking about. But I guess my only point really is when we're looking at, let's say, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, and then we're looking at these other two communities, I don't think it's as productive to think that, oh, they're just the, the communities are inherently this way. But oftentimes it's the incentives, the structures, the dynamics, the, you know, put people in a competitive environment, they're going to be more competitive. Yeah, I don't think that I don't think that we are condemning them for the way that right. they are. We just we're just hopeful that. Slowly but sure. And listen, I want to be the voice of reason if anybody is listening. And, you know, that's kind of the goal here is we want to be the voices and provide the opinions that we want to share to the community. Like we want to we want to be critical, but at the same time, respectful. We want to, you know, separate pros and cons, but we want to accept that every project has cons. All that's fine. You know, you, you don't need to be so, you know dogmatic, so aggressive and just so bashing of the other community. Like clearly, no matter what, no matter which side you fall on, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin and Ethereum Classic and Ethereum have all been some of the most significant players in the crypto hall of fame. And, and that's kind of not debatable. So, you know, I don't like when there's contention amongst these types of players because it's largely unnecessary. Hey, it's Brent again. Remember me from the beginning of the episode? I'm here to remind you that the Crypto Basic Podcast are not financial advisors. We're, in fact, idiots. And everything we are doing here is for your entertainment only. All investments have inherent risk. Please do your own research. Do not listen to us. And never invest more than you can afford to lose. Thanks for watching.